Whenever the Duke and Duchess of Boxford comes to visit Sodor, that means Spencer, their private engine, comes along too. Spencer is very fast and is very snooty, and that is why some engines are not filled to see him, especially his cousin Gordon. Hello, Gordon. Still going slow? No, I've been working hard. I'm being a proper engine, doing proper work, not showing off wherever I go. The next day, Spencer spoke to Gordon again. You know, Gordon, I was thinking last night, there was no way you can beat my record or the Mallards. I bet I can. Oh, you can't. I can! Alright then, this afternoon, try and have a go at it. Challenge accepted. That afternoon, the two engines met up again at Knapford. Just watch me, Spencer. This will be a run to remember. Alright then, on your marks, get a uh, big pardon, Gordon, but are you sure you're doing the right go? And Gordon was off in a flash. Gordon's wheels pounded the rails. He was determined to beat Spencer's record, but he was heading for trouble. Up ahead, Douglas was waiting with a goods train, and as Gordon rounded the bend, he braked hard, but he couldn't stop in time. Luckily, no one was hurt, but Gordon felt embarrassed, and Douglas was annoyed on the other hand. Why can't you be more careful, Gordon? Uh, sorry. The fat controller couldn't believe him himself when Gordon told him that night. Trying to outdo Spencer's record? Goodness, first city of Troros and now Spencer's. This is becoming a habit, Gordon. Maybe doing good work for a while will make up for your terrible decision. Good work? Oh, no. Does this mean I get to pull the express, sir? Or me? Sorry, you two. I've asked the Duke and Duchess to use Spencer for the job. What? Oh, just my luck. Gordon hated pulling trucks. And whenever he saw Spencer, he would tease him. I dare say, Gordon. Next time you might end up getting punished. Thomas had a plan to make Spencer see sense and to pay out for boasting to Gordon. Spencer, you might want to be careful yourself. You don't want to end up in the magic buffers. The magic buffers? What on earth are they? Whenever an engine does stuff over and over that are so naughty and have crossed the line, their controllers would send another engine to force that engine into the buffers where inside lays a scrapyard where the engine gets cut up. Oh, Thomas, you're just being a silly little engine. There are no such thing as magic buffers. But that's what you think, Spencer. That night, Thomas spoke to the fat controller about his plan to get back at Spencer, and if he could make a visit to an old friend to help out. The fat controller agreed to the plan. The next day, as Spencer was picking up his coat, he saw the engines with a very small purple engine. Spencer had never seen this type of engine before. Who is this? Spencer, this is Lady. She came from a place called Muffle Mountain, near Shining Time. It's very far away. You would have to get on a ship to get there if you are a locomotive. Interesting, but I've got work to do. No time to waste. What Spencer did know was that Lady was actually part of Thomas's devious scheme. She was going to cause a great deal of trouble. Lady soon started getting into action. First, she bashed some flatbeds into some boxcars that Toby had just delivered. Then, she bumped a log car and spilled logs onto the tracks, causing them to derail Henry. And lastly, she spilled milk by forcing a truck full of it into some buffers. 
the Fat Controller had to speak to her severely. If you can't behave, I shall have to do something that is very tragic. Yes, sir. Luckily for the two, Spencer saw this. And the next day, when heading back to his shed, Spencer saw Thomas and Lady near some buffers. Oh, I should have known better. Why? Oh, why did I be so mean? It serves you right, though. Into the buffers you go. Oh, drop the act, Thomas. There's no such. Before Spencer could finish, Thomas forced Lady into the buffers and she magically vanished. Spencer was now taken aback on what he had saw. He was horrified by what he had seen. <laughs> oh my god, they, they, they are real! And he raced away. Thomas just stood there laughing. And after calming down, he went to find Spencer. He soon found Spencer in a shed in the yards. Oh, Thomas. You were right, poor lady. She has been cut in half alive. Well, Spencer, none of that information is fully true. It's some of it's fake. I made it up. What? But what's inside the buffers? Just come with me and you'll see. So Thomas led Spencer back to the magic buffers where they vanished from Sodor to a place Spencer never knew about. Spencer, welcome to the Magic Railroad. It's like a bridge between Sodor and Shining Time. My word. But what about Lady? I'm right here. Lady, you're alive! But why do you stay here? I'm the engine who runs this railway. I keep the magic of both Shining Time and Sodor alive. Well, Spencer, I think it serves you right for how you've been acting recently. Oh, I suppose it has. Spencer stayed silent for several days during his visit, but no one never mentioned made-up tales about buffers again to him.